particularly our, our instructors. We pray, God, by your spirit, uh, Father, that they are here to hear the vision and hear the heart of uh, the set man of the house. We pray, Father, that you would just bless uh, in the name of Jesus. I pray for your wisdom, your insight, and I pray, Father, for a transference of anointing even tonight. We just thank you, God. We pray, God, that our teachers would be ready, uh, Father, that they would be studied up, and when it's time, uh, Father, to launch the Agape Net, uh, that they'll understand how important and how uh, strategic this is to make a difference in what we're trying to do, to get people to be in, to get some depth and get past the shout and get past the feel good uh, of, of, of worship, but understanding what it means to live in the kingdom and operate in the kingdom of the most high God. We just thank you and we give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. Well, God is great. Thank you. God is great. And he is greatly to be praised. I know I see a lot of sniveling and eyes watering. And I just pray for the spirit of infirmity to be up under the devil's feet tonight. Uh, that that healing and restoration would come to your bodies. Uh, that you would feel better. Amen. And while um, uh, Sister uh, Jay is out, she's on TDY. Um then the other every other teachers here, I think, or no, who's missing? What teacher's missing? Oh, Chris is coming. She had a mishap with her automobile. She's coming. Uh, not not a wreck. It's uh, uh, you know, when you have a son, you can have problems and issues. And so she had a situation with a son that couldn't read the oil light. So. so. Yeah, you know what that means, don't you? Yes, uh, so she she got a little issue. But that issue will be leaving the house here in two or three days. So, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Everybody got a boy, better know. <laughs> Trouble is ahead. I ain't, I ain't prophesying nothing. I'm just telling you what truth is. <laughs> Anybody got a boy over 15 can say amen right now. Yeah. <laughs> Lord. Seem like girls are so easier. Lord, have mercy. All right. But anyway, uh, tonight I, I wanted to talk uh, a little bit about review, just a review, just a review, just a, as, as a review. If you can do it without looking at your notes, like looking at your pad. What is the vision? What are the seven points of the vision? There you go. Mm-hmm. That'll keep on going. Education. That's don't make no different words at. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now she did that one already. She said study the word. She said study the word, prayer, praise, and worship. The there's one more. Did someone say fellowship? And there's one that there's one more that's con, that's linked to evangelism, evangelism and missions. There you go. You had it. I think she could have done it by herself. You know, it's it's like when you when you hear something, some people get it in order, whatever. But if you know it's seven, you can do it. Now those seven things, we try to bring it to do to do what uh they're critical in trying to get people to teach them to do three things what is that to be humility unity and service that's exactly right you can't if we can get you to do the seven things we can get you humble enough to unify and service how did we get the humility unity and service who's been with me long enough to know how that those three things came about Anybody know anything about that? We didn't talk too specifically about it last night, but anybody know anything about how we got unit, humility, unit in service? 1994, even before taking over this a ministry, I was in Israel. 
and I got a chance to be with Kay Arthur on her 52nd trip to Israel. We was on about a 21 day pilgrimage all through Israel. Man, it was a great time. I got to Capernaum um, and there in Capernaum, not, and not on the Mount of Olives, this was actually in Capernaum that I saw this olive tree and there was a bunch of olive trees and there were a bunch of olives uh, that were uh, on the ground. And, and the spirit of the Lord showed me something as I was looking at this olive tree, the spirit of the Lord showed me uh, something that those olives on the tree individually are good for nothing. But unless they fall, the falling represents humility. And then it's this, an individual olive is no good. And right to the right was an old ancient olive press. And on the olive press, you put olives together and you crush them, which means unity. Until the olive falls and it's crushed and loses its identity, it can never uh, unite. And see, here's the problem with the body of Christ. The body of Christ is really not, I mean, the Lord gave me this almost 26 years ago, 25 years, yeah, 25 years ago, the Lord gave me this, but it, it's so prevalent. If you think about the church, very few, you know, I, I got this even this time when I was in, on vacation, every time I go on vacation, and even the same guy I preach for, I've uh, been preaching for him for a little while now, uh, and the one before, every time they say the same thing, how do you leave for four weeks in a row? Easy. If it's about you, it can't happen. And the church continues to make it about one person. Think about it. You think about any church, any ministry that you you, you want to tune into and you watch, it goes to nothing if the lead guy dies. There is no really no setup for anybody else. It really isn't. It's or nowadays it's become a family business. Have you ever noticed the church has become a family business? You know, instead of picking the anointed one to take your spot or someone that's more qualified, they pick a wife. They have a wife to come up. They'll, they'll, they'll have, uh, and there's many people that are much more qualified that are in the Levitical priesthood and in the line of priesthood. But we've done it, and it's almost like nepotism. We have sons and daughters biologically, but we have spiritual sons and daughters that are much more anointed. I'm just saying, and, and that's just what we've done. Because we've not, not the identity out of the thing. And I tell you what, when, 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 when you see a crushed olive, then you recognize that unity comes with a price. Unity comes with a price. You cannot, you, you cannot crush an olive gently. You know, you don't crush grapes, you know, uh, 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 cut, uh, 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 crushing grapes. It always happens with, um, you know, stomping and that sort of thing. It, it's some effort going into that stuff to really kind of bruise them completely. So you never see a, a grape that you put into one of those uh, uh, tubs uh, and come out uh, being identified like it was before it went in. It just don't happen. And so it's humility, unity, and then the last of service. The service part, the Lord showed me like a river, a river of oil just flowing, a river of oil flowing. And there were people along the banks of the river using that oil for the various purposes um, that oil can be used for service. And so that's where that unity, humility, unity and service comes from. Excuse me, unless we're willing to serve, it doesn't really matter what it is that we learn. And, and I think that's important. And we've got to get people to a place really of, of learning how to serve. Next thing I want to talk about, you know, to try to, in all of our things and the things that we're doing, a couple of little things, more things I want to hit because I was really supposed to have three days. So I'm trying to put these two together if I can, so we don't have to do another day. But here's what I wanted to talk to you about was this piece upon about sonship. You know, I think it's important that that we develop people uh, in ministry that that really, 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 really 
want to um, emulate or get inspired uh, by what it is that you do. I think that's important. I think that's important. It may not happen for you, you know, at this ministry, it may not happen, but I think to encourage people because people have a tendency, um, you, you hear military people talking about it in terms of battle buddies. People tend to do things not for a big organization or a big organism, but they do it on an individual basis for people. You, you understand what I'm saying? When you connect to people, it's important to connect to them. And it's also important that we have everybody in their life should have a Paul. Uh, or, you know, that would be someone that you um, uh, are looking up to, to, to guide you, to lead you, you know, it, that's that, I mean, that's absolutely important. And I think to the degree that you learn to connect to your, to your, what, what I call is your apostolic anointing, that's important to be able to connect to that apostolic anointing, that person that God has put into your life as your God speak. That's that's important um, to the degree you understand who your Paul is and serve that way. Those that would be Timothy's to you or be under you, that's important that they see you serve. That that you may serve them. Likewise, they can uh, look at you to see what they need to be. And everybody kind of needs a Barnabas, someone that is going to be on your plane, on your level, somebody that you can kind of, uh, uh, you know, talk to. And, and that's not going to lead you down the wrong way. You know, uh, you should be able to talk to the person that is your um, Paul. You, sh you really should. You should be able to talk to someone. You know, I think in the body of Christ, we've got people who are just so prideful that it's like, man, you know, what, what are we, what are we prideful about? What are we, what are we running for? Why do we have to be so competitive? There's, there's no need to be competitive. It really isn't, you know, every ministry goes through a cycle. Every ministry goes through something. And the question is, how do you behave when you go through it? You know, and, and I'm looking at our ministry now. We're going through something, especially in, in, in the area of praise and worship. It is totally different from when we started. It's almost like it when it was when we started. Uh, but then there's been, you know, 20 years of the best musicians. Matter of fact, our praise and worship leaders are all on recordings, except for, the, you know, um, maybe the only one that's not been on a recording is David. But everybody else before it, going all the way back. Is recorded. My daughter Brown and on and on. They are all on pro professional singers, professional singers. That's who I used to come up behind and preach for and preach, and and have musicians that were par excellent that were that were given to the ministry. Didn't even have to pay them anything. This is the first era where we're paying someone to play a play an instrument. We never had to do that. We never did that. So it's it's new territory for us. It really is. And even when we didn't pay, we had the best musicians in town. It's amazing. And they were paying two thousand dollars over at Vogelway, fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars for their for their musicians. But but we had musicians here because it was just the spirit of of what we were doing. And they wanted to be a part of excellent ministry that was doing stuff around the world because they had a job. They weren't looking to be a hireling. They wanted to be better in the kingdom of God and do some things. And uh, their sacrifice paid off because they got connected to bigger and better things. And, and I was able to get them in position. Microphone. Oh, it's, oh, it is loose. Hold it to high. Yeah. But anyway, um, but, but, but the, uh, the, the, the main thing is, is, is how do you, how do you become, uh, understand this whole piece, you know, of sonship? Uh, we know that probably the best example that I can give you is Elijah and Elisha. You know, when I look at Elijah and Elisha, 
that that Elijah and Elisha situation we we're, we're already gone through Second Kings in our Bible reading. Uh, you know, when 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 Elijah died and Elisha was taking uh, going to take his place, the, the the guys that were around Elisha said, "Listen, your prophet is leaving. He's going to leave." And and he made the point that he says it makes no difference where he goes, wherever he go, I'm going to be there. You know, to me, that speaks volumes to uh, loyalty. It speaks uh, volumes to a commitment uh, uh, to who it is that you're serving. And 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 what 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 strikes me about it is that when he got ready to go up, the Bible says that he asked Elijah a question. Elisha did. He said to Elijah, he said, can I? I want to have a double portion of your anointing. You know what's interesting to me? We in the body of Christ now don't really see that as it's written. We've got too many people who say, I don't need a man of God. I just got Jesus. I can, me and God can, I can just do it with God. I don't need anybody else. I'm, that's not what that scripture says. The scripture didn't say, Elisha didn't say, I need a double portion. Of 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 God's anointing. That's not what the scripture said. He said, I need a double portion of your anointing. And 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 what anointing did Elijah have? Elijah had a, 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 a an anointing that would stand in front of a king and said, It ain't gonna rain unless I say so. Man, that 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 that's that, that's that's an, a powerful anointing. Not only did he say it's not gonna rain, it's not gonna rain nor do unless I say so. Come on now. That, that's a powerful anointing. An anointing that says, okay, it's 450 of you all. It's one of me. Call on y'all's God. And the one that answers by fire, let him be God. That's an anointing right there. That's an anointing to stand flat footed, look at him and say, okay, your God sleep now, ain't he? Uh huh. He on vacation. You need a match? You need some help? You want to use my cell phone? This is, that's an anointing to have. He said, I want a double portion of that. In other words, I'll take down, I'll take down 900 of them. You know, that, I mean, you, you understand what he's saying? God, if, if you understand who you're serving and that person uh, 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 grants you that anointing, man, it, it, to me, that's a multiplier to your ministry. It's a multiplier to your ministry. But we've got arrogant, self-serving people who believe like a two-year-old. My, 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 I, 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 I can do it myself. No, you can't. You do need, I need the anointing of my man of God all my life because he's brilliant. I'd really do. I need a double portion of brilliance. When you don't, when you, when you, when you're not the brightest bulb in, in the chandelier, yes, sir. You want to be, you want a double portion of that. Amen. And so, and so Elijah goes up in a whirlwind and, and Elisha catches the mantle. The Bible says that he catches the mantle. And when he catches the mantle, uh, I love this. He catches the mantle and he becomes the prophet for Israel. He becomes the prophet to the kings. And, and how did he become that prophet? How did he, he become that prophet? Not just because he caught the mantle. Because then Jehoshaphat, and and a, and a confederation of kings got together and they were going after the Moabs. Y'all just read it, right? And, 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 and they said, is there, we do not have a prophet that we can go uh, uh, to that can advise us as to what to do. Now, this is the king talking. This is the king going now to the, to the prophet. Listen. I'm trying to help y'all understand a lot of times it, 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 it gets cloudy because people have an agenda when they listen and they can't hear the spirit of the Lord. They can't hear the spirit of the Lord. If you would listen and hear by the spirit of the Lord in our lifetime, in my lifetime, and that's 64 years, that's a long time to live. 
in my lifetime, this is the first time I've seen the system. We went through the, the seven mountains. The system work like this, where Jehoshaphat said, and a confederation of kings said, is there a prophet that we can consult? For the first time, point in case, did you know that all the guys that were spiritual advisors to the last president got told about his stance about gay marriage and all of that after he made the decision. They were upset and embarrassed. And many of them who had support didn't say nothing. They were like crickets. But we tried to tell them before that, but they like crickets. This guy, you know, the, the, the Antichrist, he calls them before he makes decisions. That's how you got the first step that. I hope your brother comes out of that. I hope he, does he know about it now? Have you written him? You didn't make sure he applies because there's an application part of that. You have to apply. You have to go through this. There's a program. He's got to get in it that qualifies him to, to, to get out. Some have already gone through some of those in certain states because we use the model from certain states were used. And it's certain things you got to go through. You meet them criteria. They're going to let you walk. If you are a nonviolent offender and you, you know, you don't have to have served your time. It, it, they, they pretty much say if you are nonviolent and you are, um, it was that a ambulance going up and down the road or something. Yeah. If you, if you're a nonviolent uh, uh, offender and, uh, they, they can open up a space, they are trying to open up spaces. So, but you gotta be aggressive and somebody, family member, somebody gotta let me sure, make sure they tell him there are some things that they have to do and go through. It's probably drug uh, uh, programs. There's all kind of things you got to go through to make yourself marketable because uh, a lot of people are in a lot of uh, uh, states and people who are part of this act, they are also doing what is called uh, um, uh, un, uh, you don't have to check the box, meaning you don't have to say you as a felon. And that's, a, that's a, 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 to me, that's a, a good way to get a job. That's the big discriminator that keeps our our boys and girls who have uh, um, hello, how you doing? That that our boys and girls who have who have been in prison. This is the number one thing that 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 stops them because it makes no difference. But isn't that amazing uh, in white collar crime or any other kind of crime where 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 let's say for instance you file bankruptcy if you file bankruptcy after seven years depends on which chapter you file on the eighth year you don't have to say i filed bankruptcy you can walk in and just get whatever you want to huh your credit score even changes they don't even they don't even it's nowhere on your credit score that you had it why is it that a man does 10 years in prison seven years in prison he serves his time good time he finishes and then when he gets out, he always got to have this little thing around his neck. I'm a felon. That's important. And that's what I'm talking about. Because the king spoke to the prophets, all that stuff is gone. Because the king, most of the people who represent the kingdom, you know how they used to show, they showed, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Bush the older <laughs> in a supermarket. He didn't know the price of something, milk or or something, they look crazy. Cause guess what? When you got servants, you don't know the price of milk. You know, they was asking Bill Gates, you know what? They had him on a show and they had all these little products coming up. Where's the price of dishwashing liquid? I mean, he didn't know, but it was funny looking at the show because it, but some people looked at it wrong. I mean, you know, my wife don't know the price of stuff. Why? Cause for 31 years, she never go to the commissary. I know the price of stuff. So it's not you know, everybody making fun of it. Oh, well, you can make fun of my wife. My wife has no clue what the, what stuff costs, really. Huh? I mean, you know, if you, you you know if you don't if you don't go and you're not buying it, you don't know what it is. And, and but it was funny, uh, uh, you know. Uh, and, and then then Hillary Clinton last time it was funny. They had her on New York subway. She didn't know how to use the card. 
She ain't never been on the subway. But you know, you're trying to make yourself look like you're a common man and you didn't know how to scan the thing. And you know, you ain't been on the subway. And so what I'm telling you is it's best when that kind of relationship happens. So this whole piece of authority and, and sonship is so important. Uh, uh, but you know, when it really gets right down to it, Elisha dies now. The Bible says that Elisha dies. And when he dies over in, in 2 Kings 13, when he ended up dying, the Bible said he was sick and then he died. And then the Bible says that when they buried him, it said a raiding band from Moab came and got on the grave and, 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 and said that they put a dead man's bones on, body on him and, and, the, and the man came back to life. And why did that happen? Because Elijah dropped the mantle to Elisha. Elisha gets the mantle. Watch this now. Elisha begs for the mantle. I mean, he hangs around him and he hangs around him and he hangs around him. And he hangs. see this Saturday, you know, I'm going to go on mission trip. Every time I go on mission trip, I really think about this scripture. I think about how they live. And, and, and there are places I'm going to go, I'm sure, in India and part of the places I'm going to go in Sri Lanka again, every time I go, there is no real uh, toilet paper is, uh, uh, let's call it a luxury. <laughs> it's not a necessity. So if you live in a culture where there's no toilet paper, your left hand is valuable. You don't see people putting their left hand in their face and, 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 and doing a lot of stuff with the left hand. You can't put your left hand in the eating pot. If you get your right hand cutting off, you're going to eat by yourself. Because your left hand. And the Bible says that the Bible says that when they were looking for a prophet. After Elijah died, the Bible says when, when, when Jehoshaphat is there one and a servant said there is one who poured water. On Elijah's hands. In other words, Elisha was so close to Elijah that he took care of that business for him. See, people miss that in the scriptures. See, where I go, that you know, that, that, that you know, pouring water on his hands means you help clean his hands after he got through doing number two. People didn't even think about that. That's how close he was to him. But here is the hubris and the arrogance and the misstep of Elisha himself. He dies and he has nobody around him. How in the world are you going to go to grave with your anointing? How, how dare you go and be a great teacher that you are and don't have people that you're tutoring? How selfish of you to be so gifted hmm, in what you do and not share, you know, your, your love for it to somebody else. How dare you to be a teacher as good as you are and not have young people or someone that is sitting by you wanting what you want and wanting what you have. But but the Bible says the Bible says that they laid the man on it and he he came back alive. You know what that shows me? That there's more anointing in a graveyard than it is in the church. Because people are dying with their anointing and they're not sharing what they do best with anybody and they have no passion. See, that's why every time it doesn't make any difference. See, I'm getting ready to preach to 20,000 here next week. I'm going to tell you what, ain't going to be no more passionate than I was last night or tonight. You can't get no more on fire. And that's exactly every time. I don't care if it's five people, 10 people, 20 people. That's why in your small groups, leaders, when you're teaching small group, when we do our, continue in our small group, we've got to be able to be with passion, with fire, be ready to go. And if we don't have a transference and understanding a uh, uh, sonship, there really is going to be a problem. So I wanted everybody to understand a part of our church and one of the tapes that I'm going to put together for the mandatory things that people can go through is really understanding this thing called sonship because I am sick and tired of the church being relegated to one person. Mm-hmm. 
Let, let, me, let me show you how it should work. I don't even know him. I've never seen him before in my life. Watch him answer this question. Answer this question. Let me ask you a question, sir. You're in the army, correct? Who is your uh, commanding officer? Major Johnson is your commanding officer. Who's your first officer in your chain? Sergeant Lacerda. First Sergeant Lacerda is the first person in your chain that you have to deal with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly. So if something happened to the major, you said who, who, let's say the major just slipped on a banana peel and you don't see it. Who, 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 who would you think? Who would you, you turn major, what's his name? You met him yet? But you know the sergeant major picks up. You, you see what I'm saying? He has some clue. He has got here and he can name a name. I can put the mic in front of folks. I can go around church to church and put a mic in, in, in the mouth and say, your pastor slips on a banana peel. Who's in charge? Most folk cannot equivocally, unequivocally say, oh, Pastor Jones is in charge. If, if Bishop Neal is not here on Sunday, and he didn't say nothing about who's going to preach. Who do you think is going to preach in this church? Huh? I've decided, and, you know, when when it was, when when I was gone before, who was it? Elder Glatt, Elder, 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 Elder Gallup. He was, he was like the ruling elder or the preaching elder in the church. The preaching elder in the church where I'm going now is her. So if I'm not here, you can bet she's going to be ready. If I call her tomorrow. And she got to preach yesterday. She's going to be ready. That's how ready she is. If I called her tomorrow, she had to preach yesterday. She still would have been ready for that. All I'm saying is people have to know. And every military unit knows who the XO is. They you know, ain't nobody tripping over nobody. Folks just waiting for a chance. Huh? Ain't nobody going to trip. Well, I'm glad the major ain't here. I can get to do what I want to now. We ain't going to have formation today. Or they're going to do what they know to do and do what he would do if he wasn't there to do it. That's what a real substitute would do. Isn't that right? All right. So, so, so it's important that we understand authority. I think one of the key things about being a small group leader and being in a small group is we got to understand authority. The reason why the church pretty much has not gone with this great idea called small group. And what we're talking about uh, here in two weeks, our church, instead of doing Wednesday night Bible study, they're going to be, um, and I think there's a sheet they'll let you know, you can sign up for one of the classes, but we're going to be doing a series of small groups on almost every night of the week. I think there's a Sunday class for marriage. There is a, uh, thank you so much. There's a Sunday class uh, for marriage. There's going to be a Monday class. There's a Tuesday class. There's a Wednesday class. And there's a Thursday class. Is that right? No, Thursday. It's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday class. But And there's a couple of classes on one of those nights. or Two, two Sundays, two on Sunday, two on Monday, and... Um, then one on the rest of them, Wednesday, Thursday, I mean, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. And so, and so, uh, one of the reasons why small groups have not worked is because men are not under authority because people are too afraid. See the, the, the military works great on a small group. You know why? Because as at, at battalion, I only had to do was say, hey, listen here, instead of giving it to, um, uh, Alpha, uh, I'm going to give it to Bravo. And and then what Bravo does, it's a job that only going to need a squad to do. So then I allow the commander at Bravo to decide which platoon and the platoon leader, uh, first platoon Bravo, which say, okay, first squad. First platoon Bravo is going to go do it. So, but guess what? That platoon, that squad is still under the authority of that platoon. 
And that platoon is still accountable to that company commander. And that company commander is still accountable to me. The military works at good. We can put a squad out to do something and they will do it exactly right. The problem in the church is we put a squad out. That squad wants to become a company. Or he's trying to be its own battalion, trying to start its own church. And that has really been the setback. But the best way to learn anything in the Bible is really in a small group. Because the Bible even talks about it, that they went from house. They was in the houses doing this. That's right. House to house. And, and, and but we've gotten to the place that we're too afraid to let loose. And I, I really do know that we have some great leaders here, but we have to be uh, really under authority. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13 and verse one through two, here's what it says. It said, let every soul be subject to the governing authority for there is no authority except from God and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. That's why you notice in our society right now, do you know one of the biggest, biggest things you see going on in school system? Hmm? Is that I'm not know what's going on at your school, Miss Johnson. I really, I mean, Miss Jones, I don't know, but let me let me say this. I know what goes on at our school here. Teachers don't get the uh, option for students to call them by their name. They're Miss, Mrs. or Mr. But in 90% to 100%, 99.9% of all public schools and public learning, you just Jamia. Why did I do that? You know why that started a long time ago? It's the breaking down of authority. When you break down authority, I don't care what you do. That's the, that is the that is the way to 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 breed a, a rebellious soul. Why is it that in the military the first thing you hear is they tell you to say yes sir and then the guy hollers at you and said don't call me sir. Because what they're doing is trying to teach you not only authority, but represented authority and the real authority. In other words, the sergeants, they teach you to say, sir, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, sir, don't call me, sir, I work for a living. And what he's trying to say is, the big man is, sir, don't miss that. But me and you still don't get common with me. It's amazing. The military can do it. We take people and the first thing we do is we strip them down from the world. We take the world off of them. We tell them we're taking all your hair off. We're going to make you like Samson. We're going to take all your hair up and we're going to build you back up. You ain't got no muscles. We got kids that go 13 weeks and they come back a Marine, man. You see them guys? He was plump and fat when you saw him. And now, boy, he's ripped. And you think like, what happened to him? They shaved his hair off. They took everything from him. They, they, they gave him underwear. They gave him a shirt. They gave him a new language. Now he speaks Marine. Or he speaks army, or he speaks navy, or or, or 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 he speaks air force. But but guess what? He don't speak street no more. He, he, isn't it amazing in a short period of time? But you can be in a church for ten years and never change your speech. Why? Because nobody has really submitted to any kind of authority or any kind of shaping for their life, and that's what the vision is for this church is tough sometimes because people say, well, you know, Bishop, you know, that you, you've been running the church. You act like you're still a colonel in the army. No, we, we all should run our churches like this. We should be disciplined. Huh? It just, you should, that's the word disciple. We don't disciple people. We really don't. Discipling to, is hard. It's hard to disciple somebody. When, when I disciple somebody, people say with me, well, Bishop, well, Bishop, I mean, where do you get off? Where do you get off asking people for their credit score? Where do you get off doing that? I said, where do I get off getting a kid out of the projects from Chicago, ain't never have nothing, buying a house in Germany? That's where I get off. 
I get off changing your life if you listen to some principles. And sometimes I can't get you to your destiny to show you you could be a sergeant major, that you could make it to the top until I get that street dust off of you. Oh, come on, talk to me. You know, that's what the army does. I see your potential. I see your little fat, roly-poly self. Now do some more push-up. Pull yourself up. You're a little fat, roly-poly. They can't say that no more in the basic crane, can they? They used to call you out your name, boy. Huh? Am I talking right? They used to call you out your name. But they wasn't calling you out your name for any other reason but to get your attention. Am I talking right? And so, and so we can't handle that in the church, but you can handle it and in and, 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 and the military, and you don't even know these people. I know, and that people, and the people really don't like you. Oh, Bishop, you can't say that. Yeah, I can. Because one of the things, my drill sergeant Hines, I, I'll never get him. I ain't been in basic training for 43 years, but I know drill sergeant Hines. <laughs> drill sergeant Hines said, I don't love you like your mama do. I don't love you like that. Oh, God, I think like what? This dude don't care nothing about me. No, I don't care nothing about you. Don't get that twisted. But we did everything Drill Sergeant Hines said. Pastor loves you. Pastor, go home and cry over you. <laughs> but as soon as he demands something from you, huh? you get a little attitude. Oh, I'm, I, I'm, I think I'm teaching better than y'all saying something right there. So, so, so therefore, whoever resists the authority, resists the anointing of the ordinance of God. If you resist the authority, you're resisting, the Bible says, the ordinance of God. And, and Romans chapter 13, verse 1 and 2 is where I'm at. And at the end, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. It said, listen, when you don't pay attention to the authority, and if you are the authority, don't get, listen, get a little backbone. God ain't going to get you. He's going to get them. If you're going to lead, lead. And our old drill sergeant used to say, because, you know, I went to a different kind of basic training because I was a cadet, you know, not necessarily, a, you know, because I was going to go in as a, you know, I was coming out of college. I was a cadet. But, he, you know, he said they used to always holler at us, lead, follow, or get out of here. That's going, we're going to wash you out. You know, you got to get out of here. So, 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 so. The freedom we seek when we resisting authority, we lose in our insubordination to it. We cannot be insubordinate to authority. So many say, I submit to God, but I'm not going to submit to no man unless I agree with it. Well, you know, you didn't agree with your first start and you did everything he told you to do. You didn't know nothing about him. He, didn't love, he already told you he didn't love you like your mama. But you did everything he told you. But but here's somebody. Listen, you get on the airplane. You, you, did you take a train here or did you bus from uh or did you bus from Odin in the United States? How'd you get here from the States? You you flew, okay. Did you did you know the pilot? Did you do you know how many pilots were on the plane? See, isn't it amazing how we can get on a plane? And go to sleep on that joker. No, oh, y'all ain't talking back to me. And 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 and, 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 and listen to every instruction that comes from that cockpit. <laughs> and y'all see me every Sunday, and y'all won't come on, baby. Y'all, y'all, y'all know what you, you know, it's amazing. You know, and if you don't agree with me, you won't do it. But you, if he tell you to put your seatbelt on, you will. Hey, how you doing? If he said put your seatbelt on, you will. Does that make sense? And so, and so, and so, and so, the authority of God is important. I'm going to submit to God. I'm going to, but I'm not going to submit to the man of God unless I agree with him or her or the woman of God. There, there is, you know, and this is where our upbringing and incorrect church thinking can hinder us. If we are in a position that we won't be under authority, it's a deadly thing. Can I just say this? At Agape Christian Faith Center, one of the first things I tell the teachers that are dealing with the three and the four-year-olds, I'm not 
overzealous about how much they know. What I am zealous about is them being able to answer one word commands and obey them. Stop. It will save your life. You knowing your colors don't mean nothing to me. Don't impress me. You got time for that. Being able to sit down when I tell you to sit down. Tell you to move when I tell you to move. That's important, so important, but it's not instilled in our children anymore. We're doing all kind of stupid stuff that really don't make any sense. Trying with creativity and uh, man, I, I, you know, ain't nothing wrong with creativity. I don't, I don't see nothing wrong with, with people can do whatever they want to do. But the first thing you better do is learn how to live under the authority of something so we're teaching under the authority of God. Can I say this? The next thing that's happening in our society that is that is killing authority is uh let's just take a little poll here. That's just just little 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 little, little um unscientific poll. Everybody that grew up in their house from age 1 to 18 before you left had a mother and a father in their house, raise your hand. One to 18. Okay, one to 18, we got one, two, three, four, five. So half of y'all didn't have that. I asked that question in three, four, five, six more years, it will be nobody. Because there's an outright assault on the family. And so if we can, if we can take away the family, why is that important? Because as a young boy, you know who I thought God was? Shoot, every time daddy came home, man, shoot. Man, every, I mean, like, yeah, who this joker? This joker coming here just bossing everything about and everything moving when he say move. I mean, that's got to be God right there. And so my respect for my father made it easy me, for me to respect God. I mean, it was amazing. This guy, only thing I ever, but when the pastor called, yes, sir. Like, who that joke on the phone? You know, he running around telling everybody what to do, beating us with razor straps. But then he get a call. He get up in the middle of the night because Reverend so-and-so called. I said, oh, I see here. But what he was teaching me is that what? He is a what? Man. Come on now, under authority. So if you are under authority, it's important. If you're a man, a woman under authority, there can be nothing more uh, important uh, than that. Nothing. Hello, sir. Good to see you. All right. Nothing more important. You, you got some business to take care of, don't you? Uh, 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 Alicia, you got some more business to take care of. Lord, have mercy. Feeding your boys has got to be. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Yes, sir. That last one could eat. You know, he was something, boy. That last one could. Oh, he can cook and eat. All right. Praise the Lord. You going to fix your mama some oxtails, please? All right. Okay. All right. Good. All right. All right. But, you know, but, 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 but the, 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 this whole piece of being under authority is absolutely critical. When, when I think about it, think about it, think about your life, think about your life. Those of you who, who answered that question, I just asked the question, everybody who had a mother and father in their house from age one to 18, raise your hand. Only half of the people raised their hand, just less than half raised their hand. And what I to told them is there's an outright assault on authority. See, listen, remember the women's movement, the women's rights movement and all that kind of stuff? That was an outright assault to neuter men. Just take them out of the picture. Just get rid of men. Just, we, don't, we don't need them. Get rid. And this whole thing about uh, 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 artificial insemination, all that, that's another way. Just get rid of men. We don't need men. We, you know, we can restructure family. We can have new. Every time God wanted to do something, he found a man.
There was a case that he did find a woman. He found Deborah and he's found others in the Bible. But generally he was coming for Adam. Remember in the first in the first scenario, Adam and Eve, when, 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 when all hell broke loose in the garden, he didn't come and say, hey, woman, come here. He didn't do that because because he's coming for Adam. And I, I mean, boy, that, that right there would preach. I'm coming for Adam. And that's who he's coming for. He's coming for the person that's in charge. And, and if Adam's in charge, Adam is got to be in charge. And he says, he says, Adam, he says, listen to me. Didn't I tell you? And he said, well, it's the woman you gave me. He said, bah, wrong answer. Like you act like. You act like I didn't see you next to her. You act like you act like you act like I wasn't watching from heaven, huh? And saw what happened right there. You sit up there lying to me straight to my face. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it amazing how your kids do that to you? Huh? They got the cookie, they got the cookie crumbs on their mouth, the chocolate all around their face, and they'll look you in the face. I ain't have none. Like, what was that about? It's because we don't respect authority in society. It is in us. It's ingrained in us not to respect authority. That's why the military does what it does to break your behind down. Those of you in the military to make you understand you've got to respect authority. If you do not, you know, the one way that you could get an article 15 just for when I was in the military back, I've been retired 22 years, but my guys, the best way now you could, you know, back then you could get drunk and I could get you off. You get, you could get DUI and I could get you off, but you disrespect an officer. Oh, you, you toast. You told we were not having disrespect, not in the unit. There was going to, no, no, we're not going to be any disrespecting. When that happened, we figured you are not rehabilitatable. We ain't got time to wait for you. Next up, just, you know, stomp him out. Why did we do that? Because the Bible says, and I got Bible for this, the reason why I'm tough on elders and leaders and pastors in my church, you know why that's, anybody, anybody, somebody that's not a leader in the church, tell me, why you think that I'm harder on my leaders than I am on the regular congregants? But give me a Bible reason. There's a Bible verse. That's one, but there's one even more clear than that. It says rebuke an elder openly so the rest of y'all can fear. That's why daddy, when he whooped us, he take, he, he, my brother got more whoopings than anybody. Why? He was the oldest. And my daddy would take that razor strap, open up everybody's door and beat the crap out of him, hear him hollering. And we would be like, and we, I was the one that did it. And I'm thinking like, God, that's like cold. So if he will whoop him when he know, I bet you know I did it. He going to kill me when he really catch me doing something. It made me walk better. For five minutes. <laughs> but it made me walk better. You know, I mean, but, 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 but we don't want to go for it anymore in the church. We don't want to demand authority in schools. And, you know, we don't demand discipline and, and that sort of thing because discipline brings about uh, brings about respect for authority we don't we don't we don't care about that because guess what if you have a godly respect listen god says how can you love me who you have not seen yeah I mean, you know you don't even you ain't even seeing me god said how you and you're gonna say but you can't even love someone who's praying for you right here We have got to put back in place a fear for authority. We got to listen. Remember, I told, said yesterday, uh, last night in our teaching last night, those of you who are here, a couple of you who are here were last night. I said, there is a strong delusion 
in the land, in the world, not only in America, but around the world. Strong to lose. People feel like they can say anything they want to to authority. That's dangerous. Let's go back to uh, Romans chapter 13. Uh, verse verse two and 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 and, and verse two. My fight. Uh, 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 can you can you can somebody find that in the Bible? You got it. I got it right here in front of me. Let me just read it. 13, 13, 13 1 and two. And Authority. Stop right there. It says, "Let every soul." That means who? That mean who? That mean? Oh, y'all ain't say it like I'm talking about. Say it like say it like you said in the street. Everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody right there. Talking about everybody right there. A ain't no, ain't nobody missing right there. Every single body is subject to the authority. See, here's the problem. When we do not respect authority, it really diminishes the society. Societal norms go out the street and go out the corner. Watch what I tell you. Watch, watch, watch this now. Watch this. It says, it says, watch this. Watch this. Watch this now. It says, let every soul be subject to the governing authority. Can I can I show you something? I was just with him. And we went somewhere and a woman recognized me. And I'm just always curious because I know I've been here for almost 25 years. But this woman hadn't been here 25 years. So I'm thinking like. She says, hi, pastor. Or she said, Bishop, hi, hi Bishop. Or I said, hello. And he, we did a transaction. I said, ma'am, how, how, how do you know who I am? Oh, everybody knows who you are. I said, okay. But how do you know who I am? She said, oh, I came to your church once, but I go to another church in town. I said, oh, oh okay. She's very nice, very polite. Was well, she from Africa? She's from... You see from Africa? Yeah. See, anybody in here from Africa? Every Christian from Africa respects the man of God. If y'all hear and watch the, if you'll watch the African people in our church, they literally bow when they come to me. You, 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 you just got to get used to it and see it. But they, every time they will wait for me to put my hand out, they never will because they know you never extend your hand to the bishop. They know that already. But as soon as I do, they will do like every single time they will do it. They respect authority. That's why, in if you don't mind me being a little ethnic right here, uh, uh, Suzanne, that's why when we used to go to this restaurant up the street, our church is predominantly black. And the proprietor said to my wife, she said, I love it when y'all come here with y'all's kids because they sit down. He said, them little white kids <laughs> and them German kids be running all over my furniture. You know why authority came from our roots? But we're becoming the most arrogant and disrespectful people. We could never say, Miss Brown, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am, it was never. You couldn't pay my, my kids. You couldn't pay them now to say anything. But yes, ma'am, or no, ma'am. And my daughter's in her 40s. She would never say to anybody that looks like if it's a friend of my daddy or mama, that's got to be it's got to be. Yes, sir. If you're a friend. Oh, you know, I ain't going to no, I can't lose my favor. You better understand. I don't need to call a man, you know, because that's what they made us do in slavery. That's what they made us do in here and under, you know, and here's what it came to. When I used to be on the corner, my wife said I used to be good for five minutes. But when I was good for 10 or 20, we'd be on the corner doing what we going to do. And uh, we did something or whatever. And the police come and we know we did something. <laughs> All you had to do is be faster than the slowest guy. Because they're going to catch the slowest guy. They ain't going to catch me. We ran. Now, roll up on some black kids on the corner. Hear what they say. I got a nine just like him. You, you see the difference? 
The difference was we respected them jokers. I remember, you got to remember now where my age is. I had to go to the back of the theater. You remember? I, I'm different. You know, they called us boy. I'm, I'm from the South. You know what my daddy told me? He said, let me tell you something. No one can define you but you. You respect everybody. Mr. Jones, if he's white, and Mr. Jones, if he's black, he's sir to you. You still a boy. That's When he call you boy, that's exactly what you are. And just say, yes, sir, and keep it moving. It didn't hurt me. I knew who I was. Anyway, an adult has authority over me. And guess what that scripture says? It doesn't say whether the authority is good or bad. Read, this, read it one more time. To good authority. No, no, to the good governing authority. Let's see what I'm talking about. <laughs> see, it's like obey your mother and father that your days may be long. Doesn't make no difference if, if he is just a, I don't want to call your father out his name right there, but I was getting ready to call your daddy out his name right there, right there. It don't make no difference who he is. If you want to live long, don't get in the fight between your mama and your daddy. I'm just, 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 just trying to help you right there. Stay out of mom and daddy stuff. That's like my mama, my, my daddy told me when I tried to get in his business when I was 10 years old. He stood in front of the church and told everybody he had two kids out of wedlock. And I I, I went in there and tried to buckle up with him like, uh, what you going to do? That boy showed me everything I owned. He showed me my toys. He showed me my dog outside. He showed me the food and the watermelon in the, in the, in, 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 the, in the refrigerator, my favorite food. And then he took his razor strap and beat the crap out me. And he said, don't you ever question me as long as you black. I'm still black. <laughs> Just telling you don't mess with the authority. It ain't good for you. But guess what I found out? I found out after a while, as I grew up, what a great lesson. Life is complicated. It ain't as easy as you think it is as a little kid. Stay out of that and your, and your life will be long. So I didn't hate my mama. I didn't hate my daddy. I learned he was my hero even after that beat because I understood something. The Bible is true. If you don't know nothing else, you better know some key scriptures. And these are some of them. Keep reading, sir. For there is, but there is no authority except from God. All right, now, here you go. You told me that major that's over you, he is in authority. And, and if the scripture is true, no matter how incompetent he is, if he got two left feet, if he's the worst major in on the planet, God put him there. According to this scripture, there is. Am I right? Did it say there is no authority? No authority. I don't care what authority you talking about. I don't care, huh? If it's the dog catcher that got elected, he didn't get there except for God. If he's in prior, if he the garbage leader, he didn't get there unless a God puts up and God brings him down. The Bible says in Psalm 76, and we're gonna say there's the promotions don't come from what the east, nor the west, nor from the south. They come from what above. So, so, so either see, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a church that either believes the Bible or they don't believe it. Some stuff got, yeah, we got a hand in what you know, God don't, God didn't. God, God is, is not uh, going to steal our will. But once it's happened and it's in place, you got to be subject to that authority. It says, and the authorities that exist, they are what? They are appointed by God. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not making this stuff up. And we've got people under strong delusion that they, they can just disrespect commanders because they don't like them. You can't disrespect your commander if you don't like it. That's not good and healthy for your career. Isn't it amazing? The person that's getting ready to could make a difference in your life, you won't, you won't respect them. What, what kind of foolishness is that? Oh, shoot. They don't take all that. I ain't going. I don't care. Mm -mm. No. 
What kind of attitude is that? You ain't planning on being a boss because if you were, you forgot this scripture. Whatever you reap, you sow. That's what you're going to reap. Oh, come on here. See, 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 you sow what you read. And one of the things that I try to do, and I think the person that could be my witness is him and maybe her, that could, and her for a long, long time could be my witness. Every boss that I've had, she will tell you. Matter of fact, we just reached out to one of my, 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 the four star general I worked last work one on one, I last worked for in combat because we wanted to get in touch with him again. I just wrote him a letter. Uh, he's somewhere in DC doing something. I just wrote him a letter. That man was a good man. And she just reminded me of our relationship when we came back from combat. It's amazing. I've always, all of my bosses like me, all of them. I, because I treated them with the utmost respect. Every bishop I worked for, they read, they love me. I, I, you know, I got to be the general. I would get up at 4.30 in the morning, answer his emails. I couldn't punch sin because he had to read his own stuff. But if I didn't, you know, I got to be the general. And he come in and I, you know, of course, I'd blindside myself just to see if he changed anything. And I'm thinking like, I'm running this joint. But if I told anybody, I would be disrespecting him. And guess what? I would, it would be game over. So nobody cares. You can do anything you want unless, if you don't care who gets the credit. And so being subject to that authority, man, I had guys, they loved me, man, because I was always going to be there three hours early. I begged people when they got a new job, when you got your new job, the first thing I told you, be there an hour early. I don't know if you're still doing it and, and, and leave an hour late. See, that's what I tell people. I'm always there three hours early and I'll be there. I never leave before the boss left. I never did. You couldn't pay me to do that. You could not. My wife would tell you, you could never pay me to leave my job if the commander was still in that building. It ain't going to happen because too many times I tried it when he pushed me out the door. As soon as I get in the door, ring, I got to go back. So I just said, listen, sir, I just go around the corner somewhere because I know, hey, you know, you can recall me in a few minutes anyway. So I might as well stay here. He, you feeling bad? Don't feel bad. I signed up for this. This is all volunteer army. Huh? I didn't have to be in this high position. But at some point, you learn how to serve and honor the person you serving. Huh? There's nowhere in the Bible that the armor bearer ever left. That armor bearer stayed. Matter of fact, even, even when Saul got ready to die, he said, listen, listen, this is over, buddy. I need you to, I need you to kill me. And the honor, honor bearer said, oh no, sir, I can't do that. But once he killed him, sell. The armor bearer said, well, I'm laying on my sword. I ain't got nothing. It's it. My man's gone. My man of God's gone. It's it for me. I'm giving it up. That's closeness. That's serving all the way to the end. And let me tell you something. We don't have them anymore. We don't have people that serve. I will share something with you. My wife will tell you, when I go in to serve my man of God, First thing I do, I'll go into his house and get every last one of them shoes, every pair of shoes he got, and I'll spit shine them. I don't, and I don't say nothing to none of them guys. I don't say nothing to, I don't know why they don't do it. I make sure his car, I take it and I tell him, here, take this money. I ain't got time to go. Take it and get it detailed. All my all I'm saying is this. I love the person I serve. Until we get back to that and honor, we don't have honor anymore. Huh? Man, my wife will tell you, I hate going to y'all's parades. When I, if, if, if we go into, especially high ranking somebody, like last time the general, uh, General Dingo that used to go to the church here who, who had a change of command, I went out there and they have a full parade. You know what I mean? With the bands out there and all that. My wife, here she go, right at the right time, she'd be pulling out the tissue and handing it to me. Because I can't stand that army song. And boy, when they say when they when they when they sing the Star Spangled Banner, man, that, that thing does something to me, man. It, it's something about honor to me. It's something, it's real. I, you know, I can't have I watched the All-Star game. I had to turn it off because I couldn't hear that rendition that everybody's loving the national. I can't, I can't stand that. I don't change it for me because I've seen the Rockets red glare. See, there ain't no game to me. 
It ain't no, it ain't no voice exercise with me. This ain't, this ain't the voice. Sang the song like it was written. And the bombs bursting air. I, oh, you mean because you, you ain't seen nothing. That's what I'm talking about. To me, it means something. That's why I'm crying and trying to get myself together. God, I mean. Every time I see, see the commander of troops standing out there, I think about myself. And I got all of this, all these folk out there. I'm thinking like, God, you let me do that. I, that old me, man, I was like. God, man, the enormity of authority is to blow your mind. Honor, honor is if we would honor again, we do not honor authority. Man, honor. We, we you know, my wife and I, we talking about honoring our parents. We've buried three parents since we've been here. And my wife will tell you, my father and her father in 30 something years never called us. Not one time did they ever call my telephone number. Didn't have to. Because I called them from Iraq, called them from Saudi Arabia. I called them from everywhere on planet Earth where I was. If I got a chance to call, I call my wife. Then I try to check the box, call all four of them. I'm doing fine. How y'all doing? Because the honor said, we got kids mad because daddy don't call. I said, man up. Daddy ain't got no business calling you. You got a brother or sister? Well, you just two minutes. Sorry. It's only one of him. It's all of y'all. Pick up the phone and call your mama. Your mama shouldn't have to be crying because you don't call. Changing them dirty diapers and you do all of that stuff for them and then they leave like they ain't going to call. I love you, mama. Daddy, I appreciate you. Somebody shout honor. honor. This is Sunday morning stuff here. Yeah, that's when the church is crowded, I mean, yeah, I'm just saying honor. We don't do no more. We don't we don't honor. We don't honor. Oh, when I really learned about honor, it blew my mind. My first command, I wasn't even a captain. I was a lieutenant. I walk in the building and they said something like, Eddie's, I, I remember I just got, basically I knew about it. And then the first sergeant came to me and said, hey, sir. Pull me in the office. He said, if you don't say carry on, they're going to stay like that. <laughs> Boy, that felt good right there. <laughs> that I walked in the building and everything stopped. That, you know, that you don't, you don't even know how humbling that is from a little boy from Lexington, Kentucky. You don't know how I'm humbling. That is humbling to know. But guess what? With that comes grave responsibility. It comes grave responsibility. I remember before that command, when I first became a lieutenant, I used to stand in front of the BX and chew people out if they didn't salute me. Y'all laughing. I'm telling y'all true. Oh, what's wrong with you? I was just full of myself. I ain't had nothing else to do, messing with people. But when I became a field grade officer, you didn't even know I was a field. I was in a church for almost a year and they didn't even know I was a girl. They didn't even know. <laughs> I ain't wearing my uniform. So the more responsibility you get, the less of that stuff you care about. It don't even that don't phase you no more. The older you get, the more stuff don't matter. Hmm? And that is the truth. The more stuff don't matter, the older you get. So here's what I'm saying. But here's something that never grows old is honor. Honor. To honor your elders. To respect older people. You know, it's amazing when you talk to somebody and you say to them, yes, sir, no, sir. And they see it's amazing uh, what happens when you show people respect, basic respect and honor. And it says. And those who resist. What would happen to them? They will bring judgment to themselves. 
It says those that resist will bring judgment to themselves. So many people say, I'll submit to God. But I'm not going to submit to no man. Well, you can't submit to God. And you know, one of the things, and it happens in the church. I'll do what bishops say. But I ain't going to do what you say. No, see, when you disrespect representative authority, you've just rep disrespected the authority. Try that in the army here. Try, 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 try telling the first sergeant next time you see him. I ain't doing nothing you say. I'm only going to take my orders from the commander. Try to, just be in the army and try that. I don't know what happened in the Air Force if y'all do that. But, but try that one time in the army. Just one time. I double dog dare you. <laughs> it ain't going to work. So you like what? You like your rank. Oh, Lord have mercy. That's right. Because you definitely going to lose it. And, and, and now they're easy to take off. We used to have them buttoned on and sewed on. Now they just zip them off. They say, just, just zip that sugar right off and put a new one on there. Yes, sir. We can get you. We can get you busted quick right now. We ain't got to unsew none. You ain't got to go to the sew shop. <laughs> just a zip. And here you go. Yes, sir. I mean, but 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 why is it that we won't deal with representative authority? Hmm? Sisters, why don't you listen to your older brother or your older sister? That's still representative authority. Hmm? God, my father never ever whooped me when he left us in Edward's hands. He always got the beating when things went wrong. But we wouldn't listen to him. But he was the representative authority. He should have been whooping us, really, for not listening to him. You, you follow me what I'm saying? Why is it in the church is it that way? If if, 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 if Elder Mahalata is in charge, why we got to say, I ain't doing what you say? We got to do, hey, Bishop ain't here. What makes you give you the... Have you ever heard of representative? Say the word represent. represent. Say represent. represent. All right. It, 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 it means to re, R-E dash present, which means present again. What she does is present again me. She's re representing or representing me to you. So ain't no need invoking my name. She's already the name. That's where we fall into trouble because we are a respecter of persons. You better pay attention to the authority. Hmm? I think representative authority is best dealt here. I, I love this. In Matthew chapter 8. Am I doing all right? Listen, I think it's important. We talked about yesterday. We talked about the vision of the church, why we are established, how we are established. We talked about all of those things. I'm going to put it on tape for everybody. When we go to our small groups, new people coming in can understand who I am, who what we are doing here as a church. But there is one more piece I have to do. And, and 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 I'll have to do it at another time because I'm getting we really the church really needs to know what we do in missions. I'm going to be on the missions field again. I'm going to leave uh, this weekend. I'm going to be in, in, in Sri Lanka. We're going to be there with our we got a school in Sri Lanka. I'm going to take a little segue and just talk a little bit about this and get right back to Matthew chapter eight. We're going to go there and we're going to finish there. But but we have a school in Sri Lanka that was named after my sixth grade teacher. I honor that lady because. I believe in my mind that if it wasn't for this woman, Mrs. French, if it wasn't for her, that I don't believe that I would be um, the kind of student I am in studying certain things. I, I don't. She taught us and expected more from us than you ever could imagine. She would put us in front of uh, of of the of the of the of the class and and make us read out loud and make us uh, do math. Have you ever done a math bead? 
you know, not a spelling bee, a math bee, where you stand up and you have to do math in your head until the last one drops. Man, I mean, we were able to, that's what my wife will tell you. I know every number to every card in my, in my wallet. I know them all. I know the, I know the, I know the, 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 the expiration dates and the codes on the back. All because of a sixth grade teacher who made me understand numbers and, and how to do and force me to use my mind. And then there's times the stuff I don't want to put in my head because it's easier, another way to reference it. Now, what I don't do anymore, I don't know phone numbers anymore. Nobody does. I used to know tons of them, but now I only know my mother's phone number. I know my wife's phone number and I know my bishop's phone number. I know no one. I know the church's number. I know the number to the church, but I don't know off the top of my head anybody else's number. And I don't bet you I can stand right here right now and y'all can't give me 10 numbers y'all know because people don't know numbers no more. They're in your phone. Am I right about it? I remember the number I had when I grew up as a kid. You remember the number at your house when you was a kid? Wombash 35211. Look at you going now. She had a party line. Y'all didn't know that, did you? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Wombash was the party line, yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, you had to call for Wombash for the operator to get you, baby. <laughs> yeah, she just told y'all how old she was right there. I ain't had to say nothing. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you never talked on the party line. You was too young. They told you no. Your mama didn't let you... Yeah, they didn't let you use telephone. No, we didn't. I just heard it. We didn't get to use no telephone either. We had strings and ropes, but we played like we did. <laughs> Cans and strings. Didn't y'all do that? We we act like we y'all had to. We didn't have toy phone. We had to have cans and ropes. That's okay. Now, don't play the dozens with me today. Not today, please. I'm 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 teasing. That's my wife, y'all. Since y'all didn't know that the woman that's that that's not under authority right in that minute right there. <laughs> Yeah, right there, right there in that minute, right there, right, right there. Let the record show. She he taping that thing right there. Woo wee! She gonna get me when I get home. Yes, Lord. All right, okay. But 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 Matthew chapter eight, Matthew chapter eight, Matthew chapter eight, and verse number five. I I I, I love this passage of scripture. Probably one, if not in the top two or three, four, five scriptures in the Bible. This is probably one of them. It says, "Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum." That's where I, I told you we went uh, talking about the vision of the church when we started earlier in Capernaum, where I saw the 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 uh, years ago, 24 years ago, when we went to Israel and I saw the um, uh, olive olive tree. It was in Capernaum. You know, one thing about going to Israel, I think you can say that since you just got back last week or so, it, when you go to the land of the book, man, there's just something in it. The land of the book, man, go, do not be a Christian and not go. And that's why I'm saying I don't understand Christians. We have lost our natural mind. We don't know the significance of what happened in May last year when I got a chance to go to Israel with the administration. Man, that was something when they moved uh, the, the, the capital of, 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 of Israel from from Tel Aviv to, to Jerusalem. That was major. For Christians, that man, that was major, man. But see, since we're not under authority and we got some hate going on, we miss what God is trying to do. Man, don't miss what God is trying to do. I'm telling you, man, we 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 need to understand if you are under authority, it matters. Watch this now. It says now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But here's what he said. Speak only, speak only is, uh, uh, but only speak a word mm -hmm. and my servant will be healed for I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And, and I say to this one, go and he goes. And I say to the other one, come and he comes and, and to my servant do this. And he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said, uh, unto those that followed, that would be his disciples, verily, verily, I say, or, or surely I say to you, 
I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. I love this passage of scripture. Can you go get that can that you bought me? Bring it to me real quick. It's on my desk. Uh, uh, the, 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 I love this passage of scripture. It really does help. A, it really helps to have a preacher show it to you. Here, 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 here. How many people heard this before? Seen, seen this text? Know about it? Vaguely heard about it somewhere? Okay, here it is. A centurion who comes to Jesus. Who is a centurion? A centurion was a Roman soldier. He was a Roman soldier <clears throat> who had a command of soldiers. He was a not only a soldier, he was a Roman commander. You know, for me, almost 30 years ago, when I started really getting serious about the word of God and really getting into the word of God and studying the word of God. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, getting into the word of God. Um, I. Um, I connected with this scripture. <clears throat> Having been a commander at different levels, I, 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 I understood this scripture. He, he, he talks to Jesus and he tells Jesus that he has a servant that's laying home and he's sick and he's uh, paralyzed and he's dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, he said, I'll come and heal him. And, and, and as soon as he said that, the centurion said, Lord, that's interesting comment right there. So many times we read the Bible and we read it too fast. He's a Roman, not a Jew. How could he be his Lord? <laughs> Boy, you call him Lord, you're going to make him do something. Y'all didn't hear me. Boy, I'm telling you, is it, you know, she, she, she'll tell you, I'm even, every, I get so mad with my grandkids. God knows I get mad with them. But when they are honorable, it just changes something in me quickly. When they're disrespectful, well, I cut them jokers off. But when they get honorable and nice, and you want to empty your pocket. Yeah, no, I'm not like you. I'm trying to be like you, but I can't. She knew how to cut them off, though. I'm trying to learn how to cut it off. You, you shouldn't. Old oh, kids, you need to let them go. But when they come, you know, humble, broken, poppy, I love you. All that, you know, I just. <laughs> Man, I tell you, but it's etched in my head, etched in my head, is taking the kids, I think the second time or so, to Disney. And my grandkid, when he's old enough to understand it, man, the middle one, he said, the middle one of my dead, our, our late daughter, he said, I love you. You are a good poppy. Oh, we had so much fun. We had our own room. We could have room service. We ate chocolate cake in the morning. You are so good. Man, I was trying to figure out when I could take them back. You know, that's what fathers do. You don't go doting over no father and tell him how good he is. You can't tell your God, Lord. You can't tell father, I love you. You can't say, blessed is he. Come on. You can't, when you start bragging on God, let me tell you something. Something happens. Oh, y'all didn't hear me what I'm saying. Whoo, Jesus. Make me want to just have a praise break right up through here. God, I love you. I bless your name. I glorify your great name. Let me tell you something. When you, when you just tell him how great he is. Oh, gee. Anybody got a kid that tell him, oh, daddy, I love you. Huh? Oh, you just, you, you, you're just so great. Man, your head you can't even get in the door. Even though they're trying to get up out of a whooping, you can't help yourself. It, it, it just does something to you. And the Bible says that the centurion hmm, 
called him Lord. He said, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. He said, but speak the word only. And my servant, watch now, will be healed. And watch what he says here. Many times, if you've heard, how many people have heard this preach before? Raise your hand. You ever heard this preach? Most of the time when you hear it preach, the crescendo, the, 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 the excitement comes when the man says, speak the word only. I, I, you know, I'm not worthy to come to my house, but speak the word only. Jesus never got excited about that. It's amazing how preachers got excited about it, but Jesus never did. Here's what, here's what the man said. He said, speak the word only and my servant will be healed. And then he said to, to him, he said, for I also, watch that now, in your Bible, I would suggest that you would put in parentheses uh, that you would mark the word also. If you got a way to mark it and highlight it in your, on, your, on your phone or however you're looking at your Bible, I would highlight that because here's what he's saying. It's almost, uh, a, it's, he's trying to, some, think, some would might think it's blasphemous, but here's what he's saying. He said, I also am like you. Why would he say also if he was not referring to Jesus himself? He said, I also am a man of authority. In other words, Jesus, I know your game. You, you ain't on your own either. huh? You came here huh? and you said you only do what your father say do. Come on now. He, he, he peeped his whole card. He said, you are a man under authority and so am I and I got soldiers under me that's why I related to this and when I tell see when I was a company commander the, the the battalion commander could not make me give somebody an article 15. did y'all know if you're in the church you know you should know by now I've said it more than once did you know when I took command who signed my command orders it said whatever company I was commanding at the time or battalion, da, 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 it said uh, 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 John Allen Neal, Air Defense Artillery commanding, me signing. I understood this scripture. I'm a man. Under you, I tell this one to go and he go. I tell the, the battalion commander could not make me give a mark of it. He had no authority. When I told him to go, go, I tell him to come, they come. I, if I wanted to promote him, I promote him. If I want to put him, that was my authority given to me. I had that authority. Watch this now. Watch what he's saying to him. He says, and I say to this one, go to go. And he comes and the other one come and he comes and, and to my servant do this. And he does it. And listen to verse 10. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those that followed him. I ain't found no such kind of faith. No, not in Israel. Ain't nobody like this joker. God only said that twice. He said it here and he said it to the Syrophoenician woman. Right here he says, there, listen, the ones that followed him was his disciples. He said, you yahoos, he ain't even a Jew. I'm just getting in Jesus' conversation now. He said, he ain't him a Jew. He is a Roman soldier, got more faith than all y'all, and y'all been walking with me. Just flat, just, just flat total. Just flat, just, just laid him out. He said, y'all been following me, and this joker got more faith than y'all ever had. Why? Because he understood the kingdom. He understood that God sent me. It's kind of like I was just doing nothing because I'm jet lag. Two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, and WWE was on. <laughs> Tag team wrestling. God tagged in Jesus. Tag. He came in, and Jesus is trying to tag you in. And once you get in, you got the same authority they got. And see, once you know you got the authority, use it. He said, I don't need you to come to my house. I got this now. I can lay hands on the sick. Oh, Jesus. I, I don't need you to do it, Pastor. I got this. I know how to do this. Once you understand that you are under authority, that you're under the anointing and the power of God, you will use that power. You will use that authority. You will use that anointing.
all authority originates from him. We can't separate our submission to God's inherent authority from our submission to his delegated authority. All authority originates from him. Hear what the scripture uh, 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 admonishes. If I had a nickel for every everyone who got mad and, 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 and left the church because what some leaders said, and ask them to do, I'd have a lot of nickels. Here's how it goes. Oh, I, they'll say, I, I love you, Bishop. I love you and First Lady. But those leaders are blah, 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 blah. That don't even equate. But no, 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 that don't even equate. I love it. I, you know, you send me the command. I, you know, I didn't leave because of you. I, I, you know, it was. But the same people won't leave their job because they don't like the sergeant. Because they're going to get that paycheck. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Uh-huh. Those who resist the authority of God, whether directly, as Paul, uh, uh, as, as, as Paul did, or indirectly as uh, to 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 his uh, uh, to to the delegated authority, we find ourselves kicking against the gold. God would say, and, and and it's important that we know and that we understand that we cannot do that. I just got a few short minutes, just a few short minutes. It's amazing how we deal with and understand sin. If I ask you to tell me the very first thing that comes to mind when I say the word sin, most of you would say adultery, fornication, perversion, or some form of sexual misconduct that, that you know, drinking, yeah, that's what y'all think about drugs how many times have you heard this he fell into sin watch now this usually refers to some leader having some sexual problem or whatever maybe gambling or murder or theft or witchcraft perhaps some of them had hatred and strife and jealousy, but watch now. After that long list, think about it. Adam did not jump in bed with a strange woman in the garden. He didn't smoke weed. He didn't take drugs. Yet his sin was so serious, it brought all creation into captivity and bondage. And it was the sin of disobedience to authority. Who? Oh, that's heavy right there. Hey, he didn't get some and got in trouble and caused this thing to happen. That wasn't what happened. He didn't smoke at all. He didn't get a hit or something. No, no, no. He was disobedient to God's authority. It's quiet in here. Amen. I said it's quiet in here. We don't understand how important obedience is. My wife says that all the time, obedience, obedience. And she tells young people every time she mentors, I hear her. She said, if you can do one thing, do one thing. Just be obedient. If you would just be obedient. I only got one child here today. Well, you, you're not a child. You're a man. But I only got one child in here today. A, I'm going to give you the scripture. Maybe you can write it down and remember. A disobedient child shortens his days. Last thing you want to be as a child is disobedient. 
Well, I don't like them. I don't care if you don't like them. You want to live long, you better say yes, ma'am. Right. Yes, sir. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You don't know what he did to me. God knows, but he still requires. We need we we need to consider Adam's situation when we define sin. You know, the very nature of his trans transgression spreads throughout the vine or the veins, I should say, of the human race. It really does. What what did he do that brought us so much destruction? What did he do? Simply put, he was not obedient to what God told him to do. Ponder that for a moment. Think about it. Think about it. If you're going to raise children, those of y'all raising children, don't be so quick about them knowing uh, algebra, I mean, uh, trigonometry in the fifth grade. Huh? No, don't, don't be so quick about them being able to write their name and cursive when they're four. Don't, 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 don't get it. Make it. If they're not obedient, if you don't have an obedience, when you tell your child to stop and they don't stop, I don't care what else they know. I don't care how cute they are. They become ugly. That's truth right there. I didn't hear a lot of amens, though, but I know it's true. I'll say amen light, say amen to myself. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm not saying the list I cited previously is, 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 is void of sin. I'm not saying that. Uh, but I'm stressing, and I'm, I'm stressing a point that the church often veers, you know, from the definition of sin, and, and, they, and, they, and they want to try to make it something they can... We don't connect it with the true meaning. And what I'm going to tell you right now, the first sin was disobedience. A disobedient child. Think about it. Think about it. I'm going to take, take one minute, two minutes, one minute, two minutes, whatever it takes, till you tell me you got it. I want you to think about your life, nobody else's life, not your children, nobody else, not your husband, your life. Tell me. Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. You're where you are. Because you're of, of, of disobedience, obedience. The worst thing that ever happened to you happened because you were disobedient. Am I, am I, no, 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 ain't because you got some, ain't because you smoked a joint, because you, no, you was disobedient. That's the root of all that other stuff that happened. Because once you're disobedient, you opened up, baby. The devil got you. And am I right about it? Your whole life, at the first moment, there's a message I preached many years ago is when the ax head dropped. Y'all been reading through the Bible. So y'all know them. Remember when the ax head dropped and the prophet said, where did you drop it? You got to tell me, where did you let, help me find it? And the, the prophet said, okay, where did you drop it? So if you can find out where you dropped the ax of, of disobedience in your life, Lord, have mercy. It'll trace why you are in the military and not finish college. Why you why you are E four, five, or six and got a, a got a lieutenant that you know a hundred percent more than and you gotta salute him every day. Use disobedient in some kind of way, you didn't finish school. Amen, lights right there. You light, amen. Oh, that's just that's a hard truth right there, baby. Uh-huh. You, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. We don't connect it to be. A true meaning you know without the connection we can easily be led into deception you know the Bible declares sin is lawlessness that's what it says in 1 John 3 and 4 it says it's lawlessness and the Greek word lawlessness you know it, it is defined the condition of being without law uh, 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 because of ignorance of it or because of violating it. Simply put, lawlessness means not to submit to the law or the authority. The Vines Dictionary states uh, uh, that this verse gives the real meaning to the word sin. Sin is lawlessness. And where lawlessness abounds, the devil is always around. And at some point, we've got to understand when are we going to respect authority again? I said yesterday, 
our nation and the world is under strong delusion. We believe that we can say anything to authority when we don't like what they do. You don't have that choice because all you're doing is leaping humps of coal on your own head and putting your own self in quicksand. You don't have to like the authority. You don't have to like your mama. You don't have to like your daddy. You don't have to have to like the mayor. You don't have to like the senator, the governor, or the president. Mm -hmm. You don't see just because you don't like him. You don't have to disrespect them. Mm -hmm. You know, that disrespecting what it is. You don't disrespect. You call what you don't like, but you don't disrespect them. You have to respect. And you can't play like you disrespect. But just dis uh, respecting them when you're disrespecting, because guess who's the judge of that? God knows what's in your heart. He knows who what you playing, huh? You can't honor something and disrespect it at the same time. You can't honor somebody and disrespect that person at the same time. It don't work. It don't work. It it, it does not work. Bitterness uh, uh, and sweetness don't come out of the same well. No, 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 no. The same lips can't speak. You can't speak cursings and blessings out of the same mouth. No, it, 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 it don't go. It, 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 if I ask you to tell me the very first thing that comes to your mind, you're going to say to me all this other stuff, but you're not going to tell me disobedience. You're not going to say it. The definition of sin set forth uh, uh, it's a central character as the rejection of the law or will of God and the sub and, 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 and the substitution of the will of self. In other words, I'm not going to do what God says. I'm going to do what I want to do. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Anytime you disobedient, you're saying it's not what God wants. You're substituting what you want. And that's why Jesus said to cover everything we did wrong and messed up in the garden. He said, not my will. He said, but thy will be done. I'm going to stop right here because I want to say to each and every one of you, I'm looking forward to these classes. I'm going to put together these, these things about where our church is going but 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 I'm asking tonight. You're here tonight. Um, some of you came because you thought it was regular Bible study, and I appreciate you coming out. But we're going to have um, uh, next Wednesday. We should be close. What is what's, when's the fourth? In two weeks. In two weeks. So so um, next w Wednesday will be the last regular kind of Bible study that we'll have. Uh, That'll be the last one that we'll have before we go into uh, our uh, small groups. And, 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 and this agape small group net, uh, agape net small group, we call it 2.0, really kind of rebooting our church. It's going to be a blessing. I, I really think we're going to get some people that are really going to get sharp and hungry about studying the word of God. Really hungry about opening up the Bible. How many of y'all going through the Bible with us? You're going through the Bible. We're going through the Bible in 90 days, man. It, it is really getting really interesting. God is doing it. If you want to get involved, you can start any day. And, uh, you know, just to get with someone here, one of the elders, ministers, they'll give you the program. Uh, you can look on your, give your email to this gentleman uh, to my far left. He will send you out where we are, but he'll start and give you uh, time one through uh, uh, day 20, no, 30. What are we at now? 31? 30, day 38? Whatever it is. Uh, I, I'm not looking at the days. It was kind of going through scriptures, but we got a marriage for eternity class. That's on Sunday. We have a Holy Spirit class, which is on Monday. We have uh, Finding Your Purpose, which is on Tuesday. We have a Bible Basics class, which is on Sunday. We have the Gifts of the Spirit, which is on a Monday. We have the foundation, uh, Foundational Doctrines of Christ, which is on a Wednesday. And we have the Foundations of the Doctrine of Christ. Uh, the International, we're not, I don't know if we're still doing that one. Uh, at this time, I think we are not. 
going to be doing it. So we'll, we will take that off because we don't have enough internationals that want to do it in German. Uh, they'll do it in English uh, if they're going to take it. All right. But you want to take these classes. And if you have a, uh, if you're not sure what class to take, let me just say this. If you know that you don't really know Bible basics and you've never went to a beginning class in the Bible, don't fool yourself. Don't put yourself in trigonometry when you really need algebra. Don't do that. That's not, you know, you're going to need the fundamentals. If you can't do ones and twos and plus and minus and ratios, don't, don't jump, don't, don't jump yourself because it, it, it won't help you because in a small group, it's challenging, but it's really uh, uh, um, invigorating to learn. And that sort of thing you don't want to be, starting off way behind so if that's the case go with the bible basics for the new beginner new believer i i think that's important uh those of you who have been saved for a while you've been in the church but you say you've been saved for a while been in church but you know the basics but you really have not gotten into the depths of stuff i will tell you that the uh, class that will be taught the fundamentals uh, uh doctrines of christ is going to be a, a perfect class for you on Wednesday night. It deals with Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, leaving the uh, fundamentals of the principles of doctrine of, 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 of repentance from uh, faith toward God, doctrine of baptism, uh, laying on hands, resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment. I think uh, repent from dead works, faith toward God. I mean, uh, 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 repent from dead works, faith toward God, the doctrine of baptism, laying on hands, resurrection, uh, 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 laying on a hand, laying on the hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. When we look at those six things, um, I think you will have a better understanding because if I say this to you and let me, let me just blow a myth here. Think about this. Think about it. Now don't try to be smart or try to figure out, I'm trying to trick you or anything. Just raise your hand. Yeah. It's, it's nothing embarrassing about it because most Christians miss it anyway. How many times have you heard from the pulpit? And when we get to heaven and when we get up there, oh, what a wonderful time we're going to have. Raise your hand. How many people know that ain't true? There's no truth to that. Because in the revelation, it says, John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth descending. So where's heaven going to be? That's why what Trump did is so important. It's going to be a new Jerusalem. Oh, y'all ain't going to be. See, y'all ain't. <laughs> folk read their Bible and don't even know what they're talking about. We got folk don't know that God has blessed us with a man that we want to curse. Let's call him 45. He's 45. Read your Bible. There's a new heaven, a new Jerusalem. Huh? I saw it, John, the revelator said, it was descending. Oh, that is powerful, ain't it right? <laughs> I ain't trying to get on your old preacher back home. <laughs> Preaching that garbage. Because that's just what it is. Because when you read your Bible, that's the problem. When you understand the fundamental principles of the doctrine of Christ, it makes you cry because it makes you wonder, what in the heck have we been taught? What have I believed so long? Wanted to tell you, I used to teach this class. I had one lady, she was a, a major, a captain. No, she was a lieutenant colonel. She, she was a major. Yeah, was she a captain? Yeah, she was. She was about a captain or something. Yeah, but she, 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 one day she just had a breakdown in the class. And we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know if the spirit got on her. You know, she got filled with the Holy Ghost right up in there. She just started crying and shouting and hollering. And she, we said, what happened? Why didn't they teach me this? Why didn't somebody show me this? What was my pastor teaching me? She had a breakdown. Let me tell you something. That class will make you understand. If you read your Bible, you'll repent every day. For sure, for sure, if you read it, you'll say, Lord, I'm mercy. See, that's myth number one, ain't it? I'm going up to heaven, going up yonder. 
Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Okay. And then, you know, those of y'all who, you know, the purpose for, for sure, the class on uh, the Wednesday night class is going to rotate over and over and again. That's the only class that's going to change, not change. All the other ones will. How many people are not in a class? Raise your hand. You're not in a class. You didn't sign up for one yet. Everybody's got one. You got one. How many people want to sign up for a class? You need to sign up for a class. I need for you to. It's, it, it's going to be a blessing. You pick the time you want. But I promise you, it'll challenge you and it'll be a blessing. Would somebody see uh, who, who, who's going to do it tonight? Would you do it? All right. Please get with uh, Elder Coley and sign up for class. Uh, First Lady uh, is, is tardy. Make her pay uh, a late fees, late registration. Um, send the bill to her. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. But anybody needs to do that, do that. Listen, let, let me do this. Bow your head. Father, I thank you for the word tonight. Yes, Lord. If someone's in here that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, they came tonight, they may be curious, but Father, tonight I pray that they heard something that let you let them know that there is a God in heaven that reigns and rules and super rules. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we pray now by the power of the Holy Spirit. If they're not saved tonight, that they would understand if they confess with their mouth, believe in their heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that they are saved. With the mouth, they make this confession. With the heart, they're going to believe. Father, we pray tonight that if someone's here that needs you, that they would receive you tonight. Remind them that there's no secret in 24007 Christians that, 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 that you will, those that come, you said, I will confess those to Jesus or profess those who will confess me publicly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that tonight somebody will give their life to you. Somebody might want to get filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I pray that they want more of you. And I pray that you would cause that to happen in their life even now. Somebody may have sickness in their body. I pray for healing for Brother Scott. I know he's not doing well. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost that you would just heal his body from the crown of his head to the very soles of his feet. I declare and decree that his headaches, Father, are gone in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree, God, that the migraines, Father, are arrested. Father, that there are no problems. God, even if they even did a brain scan, they will find absolute Absolutely nothing. I pray by your spirit, God. I rebuke, Father God, the spirit of any stroke, any kind of head stroke. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree his blood pressure to be regulated. No blockages anywhere in his arteries, nowhere. God, I pray, God, for complete healing in his body. Father, we just thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Father, if we leave this place, but never your presence, we just honor you and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, before, before we leave tonight, um, I want everybody, if we can get an, uh, uh, get an offering envelope, uh, you get a chance to give tonight. And the giving tonight is going to go to our trip we're getting ready to take here this weekend. Uh, we need as much as we can. We're going to do our missions trip, but we need you to uh, sow generously to what it is that we're going to do. And I'm going to ask um, if we could get our envelopes because we want to make sure we record all of your giving um, that we might be able to do that. Amen. And then shortly after that, we'll, we will just dismiss. How many people here have a question about what I said tonight? Anybody got a question? Well, let me ask this question An application. Then somebody give me, you heard the word tonight. How, how can you apply it? Anybody? How, how does it apply? How, how can we make this work? Anybody? Or was I just talking to the air? Yeah. 
He's got to discipline himself. He heard tonight that I've got to discipline myself. Anybody else? Anybody else? Excuse me. Making sure I'm obedient in all things. Man, that that that's probably you stole my hands right there. Because every time I read that, it makes me think like sometimes you just really don't want to do because you don't like something. That's the truth. And man, but when you read that scripture, man, there ain't no out. There, there's really no out. It, it didn't say what kind of authority, it said authority. Anybody else? Excuse me. Self-control. Yep, you better have self-control because it's going to take self-control to be obedient. Amen. Anybody else? Understanding that the Lord is always in my presence. He's always he's, present. He's always he's present. present. Whatever, no matter what you do, when you think me, he's not there. He's seeing that. Like Amen. 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 Well, listen, we're we're 14 minutes over what I was shooting for, but um, um, 20th. February all day, every day. Somebody's birthday. Whose birthday is it? Anybody's birthday? Nobody's birthday. There's somebody's birthday though today. I, I know it is, huh? Yours is Monday, huh? Oh, happy birthday, sir. Man. Well, how's it feel to be young? That's all I all want to know. Nope. That's been a long time ago, girl. Yeah, I told y'all, y'all drop a dime. You got to drop at least $10 for me to bend down. <laughs> I used to didn't let pennies go, man, but I'm like trying to slide them in the corners now, you know, and you just got to get something to get it up, man. Yeah, but that trainer said he going to get me right with that, though. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back, y'all. I'm coming back. Y'all better watch me now. Amen. Oh, I'm not going to hurt myself. I'm going to let nobody hurt me now. I know. Yes, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for seed sown in good ground. Bless it, Father, as we take this offering uh, to Sri Lanka, India, uh, basically India, to make a difference in what we're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all so much. We we appreciate that. It's going to be of a great help uh, to what it is we're doing. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, anybody got any other thing, anything, uh, Pastor Jones, that we need to say? Uh, the party for Friday. Do we already have it? Is it full? Uh, what we're doing, or how many people? Or was it a reservation thing? Or who is it, Mr. Chris? All right. In, listen, Pastor Williams, who has been with our church for 17, 18 years, is leaving, and we're having a uh, going away on Friday. It's going to be at one of my favorite restaurants. It's uh, Salvatore's. Um, uh, Pastor Williams has served well here, and if you're a part of our church, you want to, you want to, you might want to do it. I didn't even ask tonight. If you are here today and you want to become a part of Agape Christian Faith Center, you 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 don't have a church. Here's what I will tell you. Jeremiah three fifteen says this. It says, "I will give you pastors after my own heart, and I will that will teach you uh, in wisdom and in understanding." Um, if there, if, if, if you're looking for a pastor, I believe I'm uniquely qualified to help you to get to your next place in the Lord. If you want to become a part of this church, I'm asking you uh, to partner with me uh, and, and get a part of the vision that we're doing, taking the gospel uh, to the uttermost parts of the world. If that's you, would you lift your hand and say, Pastor, I want to become a part of our church. If not, amen. God bless you. Any first time visitor, first time you ever come to the church. God bless you, sir. Welcome to you. And I know that uh, you're going to be here for about a week or a week. I hope you enjoy yourself. I won't get a chance to to really spend a lot of time with you. I got to leave to a missions trip, but I do uh, wish you have a wonderful time and love on your mama. She's a wonderful woman. She really is. Yep. She loves you. She loves you guys. She really does. She loves you. And she's trying to get something now. He's trying to get something now. He listened to the message, boy. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Now, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work, working in us, which is well-pleasing in your sight. To you, we do give glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.